Hi everyone, it's James here from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and we'll be taking some block quotes and adding background images to create some great looking custom quotes. There's also a free download with 15 transparent quotations, PNG, and some are large and some are small. I made a few myself but mostly they are from various free sources around the web. So here we are in Dreamweaver, I've defined a new site, I've called it Block Quote and uh, I'm going to split the body tags. Now there's hardly any HTML that we'll be using for this tutorial. We're going to simply have a block quote open and closing tag like I've just put here and um, an open and closing paragraph tag and I've got a random quote from the internet I'm going to paste that into the center of the paragraph tag which is inside of the block quote. Okay Okay, now I'm going to wrap the block quote inside of a div tag so I can create a new CSS rule. So I'm going to create a div with an ID of content. And uh, you can wrap yours inside of a div and place it inside of your web design if you choose. So I've created the div with an ID of content. I've clicked inside of the div and I'm going to click on the create a new CSS rule button. I'm going to define a new style sheet and press OK and then I'm going to save it into a folder which I've already created called CSS. So I'm going to click inside the CSS folder and save it as block quote.css and my rule has been created. I'll press OK and then I'll go up to the top of the document beside the source code and click to go inside of the CSS file. Okay, now here's the um, selector I created and um, I'm just going to put a simple width attribute in there. So a width property of 250 pixels and uh, you'll see that block quote now has condensed to 250 pixels and there's a lot of padding around the edges or a lot of margins around the edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, selector and uh, we're going to zero out the margins uh, for the block quote. So I'm going to type in pound content block quote and the opening closing curly braces and in the center I'm going to type margin colon zero and a semicolon on the end and uh, when I click inside design view or press refresh you'll notice that uh, around the edges it's now zeroed out the margins but on the top and the bottom there's still something going on there Now that's because we put it inside of a paragraph tag and the paragraph tag comes with default margins so we can zero out the margins from the paragraph tag now. So I'll go pound content block quote P. So that's the paragraph tag inside of the block quote and margin colon zero semicolon and press refresh now and you'll see that it zeroes down all around the edges of that div tag. Okay, so it's time to insert our first background image and I'm gonna attach a background image to the paragraph tag. So I'm gonna type background dash image colon and use the browse icon go into my images folder and if you're following along with the tutorial I'm going to use open quote number 14 and if you're not using the tutorial then you can use whatever quotes that you have but use the opening quote on the paragraph tag and uh, as you see it's sprawled all across that div tag and we're going to set the background to re no repeat so background dash repeat colon no repeat and a semicolon on the end and that will reduce it down to one image that's fantastic now we're going to set the background position and uh, it is where we want it to be, but we're going to make sure it stays that way no matter what happens. So background dash position colon, and we want it to be left and top, and semicolon on the end. Now I'm going to use a concatenation of a selector to save us typing an incredible amount of code. So I'm going to set the padding, and uh, we're going to set the top, right, bottom, and left in one selector. Now to remember the, which order these padding selectors go in, it's best to imagine a clock face, and it goes from the top to the right to the bottom and finally to the left. So I'm going to set the top position to 10 pixels so you can see that it will push down 10 pixels of padding onto that text there. Okay, Okay. so if I change this to 20 pixels you'll see that it pushes down by 20 pixels. Now we need to push it away on the left so I'm going to go to the padding left and I'm going to adjust that to 20 pixels and you'll see that it pushes away and uh, I'm going to change that to 30 pixels you see it pushes away even further so about 50 pixels will push that completely away from the image and uh, then we'll have to start creating a space in the bottom right hand corner to put the other quotation image 
Okay, so I'm going to add some padding right now. So if you're not going to use the concatenation, then uh, it will be padding dash right colon. But uh, I'm going to adjust the padding to 20 pixels on the right. And I'm going to just keep increasing that to get the right amount of padding that I think will suit there. It's about 40 pixels has created a nice little space there. So you increase that to 45 pixels. There we go. We've got a nice sort of square block of text now. I'm also going to create some padding on the bottom so we can place our image and um, I'm going to go to the padding bottom selector there and I'm typing 25 pixels. You can see we've got a nice little space developing. If I change that to 30 pixels and uh, we should have a nice little space, so enough room to put our image into. Okay. Okay, it's time to attach our closing quotation and we can't attach it to the paragraph tag because you can only attach one background image per element. So I'm going to attach this to the block quote itself. So we're going to type in background colon and I'm going to browse for the um, image inside of the images folder and I'm looking for the close quote 14. So I'm going to find that inside the images folder, click on that and that will insert the image for us. Now it's going to repeat again, so we're going to have to put in the background dash repeat, no dash repeat property, and that will t reduce it down to one image. But uh, the image doesn't know where we want to place it, and we want it at the bottom right. So um, as soon as we put in a no repeat, you'll notice that the background image is sitting comfortably behind the opening quotes there at the top left. Now this is where most people come into problems when they're trying to position that second quotation. So I'm going to take you through it and uh, we'll get perfect position in this way. Now background dash position colon, we definitely want it on the bottom. So I'm going to close that off and you'll see that it appears in the center of that div tag or that block quote. Now if I put 10 pixels in, um, you'll see that it appears on the left at the bottom there. So if we just keep incrementally adding more pixels to it, you'll see that it slides across until you can put in the actual position that you want. You can use the ruler at the top of the um, HTML document there. So I know it's going to be 200 pixels roughly because of the width of the div tag is 250 pixels. Okay, so let's preview that in Firefox and uh, we can see that that looks really good. And the quotation text wouldn't look out of place if it was overlapping the quotation background images themselves. So we've got a bit of versatility there. Now I'm going to copy and paste that quotation because I want to make sure that that closing quotation mark is going to stay exactly where we've positioned it. So it is, I'm pasting in the text now and you can see it stays exactly positioned at the bottom right hand corner. If we need to raise that up slightly, um, we could use percentages. So I can select 98% of the height of the div tag it's in and it will raise it up uh, just slightly there. Now if I wanted to adjust it more, I could adjust say 95% and you see it goes up even further. Now if you put 50%, it would go to the halfway line of that div tag itself. Okay, now what I recommend you do is you set a specified width for your block quote. So I'm gonna specify a width property of 250 pixels for my block quote because I know that it fits into that space. Okay, but what would you do if you're opening and closing quote images were larger than the quotations we're using here. Well, I'm just going to change out the opening and closing quotes to the number three, open and closing quotes number three. You can see that the background image at the bottom right doesn't quite fit. So the first thing I do is adjust the width of the block quote. So I've adjusted that to 260 pixels. You can see the background image now appears. So I'll adjust the content div to 260 as well. But we need to push that text away. So I'm going to give a little bit more width and I'm going to specify 270 pixels for the width of that block quote and then we'll adjust some padding, some of the padding attributes inside of that block quote from the paragraph tag. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the position left of 65 pixels and you can see that the text pushes away from the left of the image there and a padding top of 45 pixels will push it down further. And we'll set a padding bottom so we can push that uh, bottom right quotation down. So I've set 45 pixels there and you can see that we're getting roughly the right positioning that we need. So I'll just preview that in Firefox. And there you go. So that's how you deal with all the changes. Please come to my website if you want to get the free download and there'll be plenty more of examples there.